HKEX will celebrate its 22nd anniversary um, soon, this month. Mm -hmm. It played a really important part of the Hong Kong handover history. Um, what do you think about the achievement and also the setbacks during this um, 22nd years? Yeah, well, I mean, it's been obviously a, a, a lot of uh, growth during this time. And, and one of the things that is great about HKEX is that it reflects the growth of Hong Kong as a whole. So we've always had like a, a track that is very much aligned with everything that Hong Kong is. When we started, I mean, about 20 sec 22 years ago, our, our volume traded was about 15 billion Hong Kong dollars. Now we're averaging somewhere between 150, 160 billion Hong Kong dollars per day in our cash market, which is about more than 10 times the volume of when we started. So it reflects all the progress and, and all the things that we have done in the financial markets uh, locally in Hong Kong. Right. So looking ahead, yeah. the next 25 years, and a lot of Hong Kong people are wondering what's, uh, what's at stake for the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, what will you do and what will the HKEX do to take things to the next level? Yeah. So um, uh, you've probably heard uh, me talk about in the past about the big bang of finance. So Hong Kong Exchange has this incredibly beneficial and privileged position of being in a place that is unique. We are the most international city of China and we're the most Chinese city outside of the mainland. So, I mean, that's very unique. We're international, we're Chinese. Chinese capital markets are probably going to have like the best years in the next 10 years. I expect the capital markets to grow from about $30 trillion, if we look at the Chinese capital markets, to over $100 trillion US dollars. In that context, what we need to do is to make sure that we continue leveraging our position as a very unique connector between China and the world. So that's the first strategy. Strategy number two, we need to make sure that we continue developing our depth, our vibrancy, and our great market. For that, we also need great connectivity with all the international markets, and we need, need to have vibrant products. We need to have depth. We have to great clients, and that is important. And the third thing is we need to, th to acknowledge that the world is evolving. It's changing very quickly. So we call it connecting today with tomorrow, and we need to prepare for all those transformation, all those changes that are happening in the world. Now you have been head of HKX for one year. Yes. How do you conclude your first year at HKX? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a very busy year. I mean, clearly, I mean, there were a lot of things happening in the market. It was uh, a period that had a lot of challenges. Uh, globally, from a geopolitical point of view, there were a lot of headwinds. But I'm very proud of all the things that we have achieved. I mean, from a product point of view, there were a lot of products that were on the pipeline that we ended up actually putting um, out there, let's take um, a list of some of them. For example, A50 futures, the, what we call the MSCI A50 Connect futures. That was a great product that was launched. We initiated new ways for investors to participate in the market, like the new SPAC regime that we launched. That was also something that was done very, very, very quickly. We did it from consultation to actual launch in just six months, which is almost like a record time. And we think that our SPAC regime is going to be a high quality SPAC regime. So lots of things in, ter in terms of products diversifying our markets, in particular as it relates to products like derivatives, ETFs. There were a lot of new things. We launched a, me a Metaverse ETX, ETF. We launched a um, Carbon ETF, an, an ESG ETF. So, so lots of new things that uh, are exciting. Also in terms of improving the m microstructure of the market, there were uh, many initiatives and progress, for example, derivatives holiday trading for our international products. This is very important because if you want to compete internationally, you need to make sure that you're there for your clients all the time. So right now, international clients or local clients that want to negotiate international products can do it during Hong Kong holidays without uh, any restrictions. So this is like very, very positive. Um, we also uh, made a few adjustments to our uh, listing regime to make it easier for international companies to come and list. We had international companies like Ferretti 
the Italian yacht manufacturer that listed in our markets. We had a lot of like um, dual primary listings, uh, which are you know a very you know successful initiative that's gaining a lot of momentum. And of course, there were a lot of things that we did as a corporate around our philanthropy. We donated over 180 million Hong Kong dollars in the last year. We became part of the Global Financial Alliance for Net Zero. I mean, lots of like exciting things. So it was a very, very busy year. Right. You talked about a lot about uh, international clients, yes. uh, companies who are coming to Hong Kong to list. But 80% of uh, Hong Kong stock exchanges capitalization currently is made up of uh, China domicile companies. Mm -hmm. So how do you get that message out to present Hong Kong or Hong Kong Stock Exchange as a marketplace for international companies, yeah. not just Chinese companies? Yes, it's a very, very important point. Right. So a lot of the issuers in our platform today are from China. However, if you look at our investor base, 43% of the participants in our market are international investors. That is a very large um, base. Now, we have investors that come through our markets to access the Chinese market. We also have investors that are no th now through our MSCI suite of products. We have 42 MSCI products, index products that are in our platform. They decide to participate across all of Asia. And then, of, of course, we have international presence through, um, we have a Singapore office. And we also have like the London Metals Exchange where we have um, participation in the commodities market. So we are a like, pretty international company. And of course, we want to use our strength that it was originally built around this strong China foundation, having lo all these issuers, becoming a new economy company. We launched our biotech chapter. So the, the, the concept that we have is Let's use that critical mass, that scale, that reputation, that great regulatory environment to actually develop a stronger international presence. So part of our objective is developing that stronger international presence. So on international presence, uh, you have uh, previously announced that you are going to open international offices. Yes. Right, we understand uh, from sources that one of them will be in the US, presumably yes. in New York, and the other one will be in London. Uh, would you care to s tell us what these pro uh, offices will, wha what would they, uh, what functions would they serve? Yeah, the, the concept is that um, we want to be more client centric. So we want to be closer to our clients. That is very, very important. If you want to make sure that you address the needs of those people, you have to be close to them. So for sure, we're going to be in the US, we're going to be in New York, that's going to be one of the offices. Now, in, um, in, in Europe, we're still defining where we're going to have like our office. I mean, there is, there it's, it hasn't been finalized. But definitely, what we want to do is to be in a place where we're very close to the main Im investors. And that's um, what we're evaluating at this point. Right. Plus, you also have the LME. Uh, right. So London. Yeah, it, ma it makes a lot of sense to try to be, if for it's, it's the easiest uh, you know, thing to do in the sense that we already have a physical presence uh, in, in, in London. Uh, however, we want to assess, you know, what are the alternatives? How, ca how can we leverage all the different, you know, in investors that are in, in Europe? Well, uh, talking about LME, yes. you bought the LME 10 years ago, but yeah. then HKEX failed to bid to buy the London Stock Exchange. Right. Uh, will you try to buy the London Browse again? Or yeah. do you have any other merger and acquisition plan? Yeah. Of course, we, I mean, uh, we're always like uh, looking for alternatives and how we can expand. However, I wouldn't um, be tremendously focused in a large international acquisition. We think that we have everything right now to succeed. Like I mentioned, I mean, our positioning of being this super connector between China and the world is, is very, very unique. There are some areas, you know, some niche that we may, you know, use uh, potentially an acquisition, a partnership, collaboration to expand. But I, I wouldn't think about a big, you know, transaction that is going to make a difference right now. We think we have everything to succeed. We have a great marketplace. But if we see something that complements what we have, of course, we're going to consider it. But it's, uh, right now, we think we have enough, you know, things in, 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 on our plate. And, and the priority is not to look for a big acquisition. 
right? And on that point, um, HKEX has a stake in Guangzhou yeah. uh, Futures Exchange, mm -hmm. which is uh, the first foreign company to be allowed to buy into a, a stock exchange on the mm -hmm. mainland, uh, which is quite tremendous. Yes. Now, what does that say about your future strategy mm -hmm. in so far as uh, futures trading, derivatives, or even climate change um, is concerned? Yes. Um, you're absolutely right. We had an investment in the Wanzhou Futures Exchange, and in addition to that, this year we we had uh, we signed uh, an agreement, a memorandum of understanding, to try to collaborate, especially around climate products. Um, this is a sector that um, is becoming more and more important. Uh, sustainability is a priority uh, in China, and therefore trying to find products a market-based product that allows us to get to that net zero is very important. In that context, we want to use all our market expertise to make sure that we collaborate with this new exchange, which is the One Joe's Futures Exchange, to make sure that we develop products to facilitate that net zero transition. Well, talking about LME, um, we know there is a problem with the LME uh, because of this suspension of the NECO has mm -hmm. uh, led to a number of lawsuits. Do you think the mm. acquisition of LME is a failure? Um, I, I mean, we acquired the LME about 10 years ago, and, and LME has an incredible history. It has a, a really good brand and well-recognized. Uh, one area that it's important for us is to try to see how can we contribute to the LME. And being close uh, to the mainland and a lot of the producers, I mean, it's something that one day I hope that we could find a way to leverage that capability. Um, if, I, if I look back at the last 10 years, the LME has been very consistent and very constant in its business. We haven't seen the same type of growth compared with Hong Kong Exchange. Hong Kong Exchange has grow, grown very rapidly. The LME has been relatively stable. Um, and obviously, over the past um, few months, uh, there was this incident uh, with the with the nickel situation, and 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 once again, we we look forward to using to using what happened to really find ways of structuring the market in a way that we can make it even better for the future. So we want to learn from everything that happened to make it a really great exchange for the future. Strategically, though, um, you've got LME, which is uh, trading old school, if you will, mm -hmm. products. And then you've got a foot in the Guangzhou Exchange, yeah. which is looking forward yeah. to trading climate change uh, products. Um, how do they all jive together in a, in a grand plan? Yeah, well, today they operate uh, fairly independent in the right. sense that um, uh, the LME is managed uh, very independently with its own you know, board and its own uh, management team. And um, it's on. And while One Joe Futures Exchange, once again, we're a minority shareholder in that one. Now, what we want to be able is to provide like the support, uh, knowledge, infrastructure as much as we can to to all the companies that are tied to HKEX. And um, also, in terms of uh, market structure, like you mentioned, we are looking forward to improving the structure to make it even better in the future. So that's you know something that we're focused on. Thank you very much. Yeah.